Hello, everyone. First of all, let me thank the organizers of Simon Fraser University for inviting me to this uh, uh, really interesting lecture series, Women in Discrete Mathematics. I just love that uh, uh, it's being organized exclusively for women. And I understand that this is the last one in this series. I was not sure whether I'll be able to uh, make it. There were some last minute confusions regarding the date due to some uh, issues from my side. We were having some, uh, uh, a kind of election going on for our local government. So there was a last minute change in the schedule. I understand that this is conducted every Wednesday and you have adjusted the date according to my convenience. Uh, I'm sorry for the trouble and thank you very much for organizing this event. I assume that the basic knowledge of graph theory is there for all the participants. So I'll directly go to my topic on leash labeling. So for the, first of all, we need to know what is a graph labeling. By graph labeling, I mean assigning values. It can be either to the vertex set or to the edges or to both. Again, assigning values means usually it is from the collection of natural numbers, say one, two, three, etc. Then it was extended to whole numbers, that is from zero, one, two, three, etc then extended to integers and now it is extended to rational numbers also. But for today's talk, I'm restricting myself to whole numbers. That is the value, by value, I mean a whole number. If we are assigning values to the vertices, we call such labelings, vertex labelings. If the value is assigned to edges, we call such labelings as edge labelings. And if values are given to both vertices and edges, we call them total labelings. In literature, there are a large collection of graph labelings. The first one and the most noticeable labeling is graceful labeling. Based on graceful labeling, so many extensions were defined, say alpha labeling, gamma labeling, graceful like labeling, K graceful labeling, scholam graceful labeling, odd graceful labeling, so on and so forth. So many extensions of graceful labelings with minute changes in conditions were available in literature. Another labeling, another interesting labeling is harmonious labeling. Again, very much like graceful labeling, so many extensions were defined for harmonious labeling like sequential C harmonious labeling, strongly C harmonious labeling, elegant labeling, fallacious labeling, odd harmonic labeling, even harmonic labeling, and uh, many more of that kind. Now coming to graph coloring, most of you might be familiar, even if uh, you are not familiar with graph labelings, you will be definitely familiar with graph coloring. Graph coloring, say uh, in the usual sense, in proper uh, graph coloring, what we mean is give colors to vertices so that no two adjacent vertices receives the same color. In fact, every, every graph coloring is a graph labeling. Instead of colors, if we use numbers, say instead of using green, red, blue, yellow, if you say one, two, three, four, that becomes a labeling. We are giving values to the vertices. In a proper coloring, what will be the condition that we impose? The condition will be that no two adjacent vertices must be labeled the same. So that is proper coloring being extended to graph labeling. Like that, you give me any kind of a coloring, I can redefine it as a labeling by simply changing the name of colors to numbers. So every graph coloring gives you a graph labeling. 
and my topic of interest for today is leach labeling this was defined in 1975 but not much explored uh, even then it is also having three kinds of extensions like almost leach labeling leaf leach labeling and distance distinct labeling let me start with graceful labeling uh, before that if you are interested in uh, say graph labeling your bible could be the dynamic survey on graph labeling due to joseph a galian which is published in electronic journal of combinatorics so coming to graceful labeling graceful labeling is a kind of vertex labeling that is here we are giving values to vertices the values are to be selected from the set 0 1 2 etc m where m denotes the number of edges so from this collection we are giving values to the vertices what about the property while giving labeling we need to that labeling need to satisfy some kind of property in the case of graceful labeling the property is that when we give values to vertices using that edges also gets a kind of a value say the induced edge labeling is if e equal to uv is an edge take the positive difference between the labels of u and v and that value will be given to the edge e initially we are assigning values to the vertices so graceful labeling is considered as a vertex labeling and that induces an edge labeling the restriction is that this edge labels must be precisely 1 2 etc m let me show you an example here you have a triangle with a two tail in graceful labeling i am supposed to assign values to vertices here there are uh, say five edges so i have the collection set 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 from that i need to assign values to these vertices you can see that i have already given some values say take this edge you can see that the end vertices are labeled 5 and 4 so their positive difference one that will be the label induced to this edge so if you take this edge the end vertices are labeled 0 and 3 so their positive difference is modulus of 0 minus 3 which is so that label is given to the edge i i assign values to the vertices and automatically i got an assignment to the edges as you can see these edge labels are precisely 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is a graceful labeling it's not necessary that all graphs admit graceful labeling that's not true in fact it is not true there are graphs for which we cannot have any graceful labeling graphs which admit a graceful labeling are called graceful graphs and one of the very famous and good old conjecture in graceful labeling is that all trees are graceful it's known as graceful tree conjecture you can prove that all trees admit a graceful labeling you are then that can be Uh, a part of your phd work okay so that is all from graceful labeling a variation of graceful labeling is edge graceful labeling here it's an edge labeling we are giving values or uh, sometimes we call these values as labels to edges from the collection 1 to etc m again m denotes the number of edges so what will be the property which is to be satisfied here this uh, labels will be inducing a vertex labeling to a vertex u consider all edges which are incident on that vertex add the labels given to them and take modulo n where n is the number of vertices you get a labeling for the vertices the labeling is edge graceful if the labeling which you get for these vertices are exactly 1 2 etc n again here you have an example there are five edges 
So I have to take labels from the set one, two, etc. Five. I'm just simply cyclically giving that values one, two, three, four, five. Take a random vertex. Say this vertex I'm picking. There are two edges incident on this vertex, and their labels are four and five. So I need to add them four plus y, and then take modulo with n. Here the value of n as number of vertices is again five. So I have to take modulo five. So four plus y nine modulo five gives me the value four. Like that, I have to find the value to all the vertices. Okay, and uh, if it is from the collection zero to n, zero to n minus one. I'm sorry, there is a mistake. Zero to n minus one. Then the labeling is graceful. You can see that the labels are zero, one, two, three, and four. It's okay if you say that the labeling is from one to n because zero is equivalent to n when we take modulo with n. So either you can say that the labels are precisely one to etc. n or zero, one to etc. n minus one. So that's from the literature of graph labeling. Now let me move on to my class of labeling, uh, namely Leach labeling. This labeling was introduced by John Leach in 1975. In general, graph labelings are valid for all graphs. But when John Leach introduced this labeling, he restricted himself to trees. That is, Leach labeling is only for trees. What are trees? Trees are connected acyclic graphs. That is, between any two vertices, there is a path, and there are no induced cycles uh, in that graph. Such graphs are called trees. What is peculiar about trees is that there exists exactly one path between any two vertices in a tree. So, if there are n vertices. There will be precisely n choose two paths in a tree. It is this property that is made use in the definition of Leach labeling. Moving to the definition, I am supposed to assign integer values or labels to edges from the collection, say one, two, three, etc. All the labels must be distinct. From that, I get path weights. The weight of a path, W of p, is the sum of edge weights of p. You take all edges in that path. Values will be assigned to the edges. You take this sum. That sum gives me the path weight. And in a tree, there are exactly n choose two paths. If the path weights are exactly one, two, etc., n choose two, then your labeling is a Leach labeling. Again, not all trees admit Leach labelings. If a tree admits a Leach labeling, such a tree is called a Leach tree. So here you have some examples. The first two are too trivial, so I'll take this third one. This is path on four vertices. I have given edge labels as one, two, and three. How many paths will be there? There are four vertices, so there will be four C two paths. That is four into three by two. Say six paths will be there. So I need all path weights from one to six in this assignment, and it's quite easy. Every edge is a path of length one, so one, two, and three are already pathways. You take the path v one, v three. We have one plus three equal to four, so four is the pathway of v one, v three. Now you take v two, v four. You have two plus three, five, so five is there, and you take the entire path v one, v two, v three, v four. One plus three plus two gives me six. So the pathways are exactly one. Two six. So this is a Leach labeling, and P four is a Leach tree. So let us take a bit more bigger example. Here I have a bi star. 
we usually call it as b22 there are two central vertices and two pendant vertices each attached to these central vertices in general a by star is denoted by b m n and here since the number of pendant vertices is two in both sides we have b22 this is a leaf tree i have given labelings let's quickly check whether all pathways are there here we have six vertices so how many paths will be there 6 c2 that is 6 into 5 by 2 paths that is 15 paths are there in this tree so i need all pathways from 1 to 15 let us check that one is an edge weight two is again an edge weight here you have v1 v2 v5 a path of weight 3 4 is an edge weight 5 is again an edge weight now 1 plus 5 gives me 6 2 plus 5 gives 7 8 is here as an edge weight 5 plus 4 gives 9 now 1 plus 5 plus 4 is 10 2 plus 5 plus 4 gives me 11 5 plus 8 is 13 uh, before that 8 plus 4 8 plus 4 gives me 12 5 plus 8 13 now 1 plus 5 plus 8 gives 14 and 2 plus 5 plus 8 gives 15 so there are all pathways from 1 to 15 okay so this is a leech tree the interesting thing is that the concept was introduced by john leech in 1975 and in his pioneer paper itself he gave this five examples of leech trees till date we are not able to find any more leaf trees till date the only known ones are these five leaf trees so that makes the problem interesting so let us see what are some of the uh, quick observations or properties of leaf trees we need a path of weight 1 and that can be attained only by assigning the label 1 to an edge so definitely there will be an edge of weight 1 again we need a path of weight 2 the label 1 cannot be repeated and we are using only positive edge weights so there will be an edge of weight 2 so these two are quite simple observations but will be useful while proving some of the theorems that is we can be sure that there is an edge of weight 1 and there is an edge of weight 2 and that will be useful to prove something okay and now there are n c2 pathways what about the path of weight n c2 that must be a maximal path if it is not if it is not a maximal path then there exists a bigger path which contains this one right and the edge weight will be in that case more than n c2 which is not permitted so nc2 will always be the path weight of a maximal path you should not be confused with maximal and maximum even a path of length 2 could be maximal in a graph of diameter say 1000 so you should not get confused with maximal and maximum maximal simply means that there is no longer path which contains this particular path there is a difference between maximum and maximal i didn't say that nc2 is the path weight of the diametral path it's the path weight of a maximal path that's all only that much we have from the definition so the simplex of all trees are paths first let us check which all paths are leech trees from the first paper itself we have seen that p2 p3 and p4 are leech trees john leech has given assignments of leech labeling to the path up to a path of length 4 what about paths of length 5 and higher regarding path what we can say is that nc2 is the path weight of pn because there is only one maximal path in a path of length n which is that path itself so nc2 is the path weight of the entire graph how 
many edges are there in Pn? We have n minus 1 edges. So when I assign distinct edge label to these edges, the values must be at least 1, 2, etc. n minus 1. That is the least possible while assigning values to the edges. Okay, if I have given 1, 2, etc. n minus 1, what will be the total path weight? It will be 1 plus 2 plus etc. n minus 1 in some order. That is, sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers, which is equal to nc2, and that is the maximum permitted. So, from that, we can be sure that the edge labels or edge weights are precisely 1, 2, etc., n minus 1 in some order. Regarding order, we don't have any idea, but for sure, the edges are labeled with weights 1, 2, etc., n minus 1. Okay, now we know that there is an edge which is labeled 1. There will be some edge near to the edge which is labeled 1, right? Take that edge. Let that label be some k. I don't know what is the value of k. There is an edge which is labeled 1 and there is an edge near to that which is labeled k. Now I have a path of length 2. What about the length of this path? The length of this path will be k plus 1. Fine, right? But I have, I already have all path weights up to n minus 1. These are all edge weights. All edges are paths of length 1. So I already have path weight from 1 to n minus 1. So this k plus 1 must be at least n. It must be greater than or equal to n because it cannot be anything from the collection 1 to etc. n minus 1. So what I have is k plus 1 greater than or equal to n, which means k is greater than or equal to n minus 1. But k is an edge weight. We already know that the edge weight belongs to this collection, 1, 2, etc., n minus 1. Now you say that k must be greater than or equal to n minus 1. So the only possible choice is that k is equal to n minus 1. This implies that the only edge which can be placed near an edge which is labeled 1 is n minus 1. So we have two information. One is a pendant edge and the edge next to 1 is n minus 1. Okay, fine. So we could start the labeling. At one end, I have placed 1. Next to that, I have placed n minus 1. Now we know that there is an edge which is labeled 2. Again, use the same argument. Near 2, there is one edge. Let the label of that edge be k. So we get a path of weight k plus 2. But now we have all edge weights from 1 to n minus 1 and a path of weight n. So this k plus 2 must be greater than or equal to n plus 1. So k will be greater than or equal to n minus 1 again. Okay. K plus 2 greater than or equal to n plus 1. So k will be greater than or equal to n minus 1. Again, the edge labels belongs to this set. So k is exactly equal to n minus 1. Now, what is the situation? 1 is a pendant edge. 2 is also a pendant edge. And both are very particular that we will have only n minus 1 near us, no one else. We will admit only n minus 1 near us. So this implies that. The only leech paths are paths of length less than or equal to 4. We cannot have more edges in that path. Only 3. Maximum 3. And up to 3, uh, up to n equal to 4. That is 3 edges. We have seen that they are already leech graphs. So with this, uh, the only leech paths are P2, P3 and P4. The case of uh, leech stars, the next simpler trees are star graph, which have one central vertex and say n pendant vertices attached to this central vertex. Such graphs we call star. 
let's check whether there are any leech stars this is quite simple when compared to that of uh, parts this is quite simple because there is symmetry in the case of parts uh, there is uh, no perfect symmetry but here we have perfect symmetry you take any edge it has the same behavior of uh, as that of any other edge so when i start labeling edges i can start with any edge of my choice so let me start with the first one uh, i label it with 1 now i need 2 so i label the next one with 2 so i have 1 plus 2 3 already is a pathway i label the next one with 4 which gives me 4 plus 1 5 and 4 plus 2 6 with that but 7 is not there so i need to assign 7 to the next edge this gives 7 7 plus 1 8 7 plus 2 9 and 7 plus 4 11 but 10 is missing so i need to assign 10 to the next edge but here i get a contradiction why 7 plus 4 is 11 10 plus 1 is also 11 which is not permitted in leech labeling so that uh, simply implies that the only leech stars are k11 which is p2 k12 which is p3 and one more which is k13 so these are the only leech stars these two are quite simple proofs and these two were uh, given in the pioneer paper due to john leech itself now regarding leech trees the next paper was published in 1977 which contains a very interesting result regarding the order of a leech tree how many vertices will be there if the tree is a leech tree and the same result was again published by the same author in another paper the proof was repeated citing the first paper in 1981 uh, let's just quickly go through the proof uh, regarding the order of a leech tree you assume that a given tree is a leech tree and you are given a leech labeling of that tree in that tree i am defining the distance between two vertices dxy as the path weight of the xy path uh, please note this this is not the usual distance but the path weight of a path connecting x and y of the unique path which connects x and y so start with any vertex v color that vertex black and color all vertices which are at an even distance from this vertex with the same black color again note that distance does not mean the usual distance it is the path weight now uh, take uh, all the remaining vertices those vertices will be at uh, at uh, o distance color them white now i have colored all vertices with either black or white let b be the number of black vertices and w be the number of white vertices all vertices are colored either black or white so b plus w is equal to n where n denotes the number of vertices now what about a path of odd weight of odd length the end vertices will be of opposite colors if both end vertices are white then they are at odd distance from the vertex v so that the distance between these two vertices will be even if both vertices are black then both of them are at even distance from v so that the distance between these two vertices is again even so a path is of odd weight if and only if the end vertices are of opposite color so the number of paths of odd weight will be b into w i have to take one black vertex and one white vertex and consider the path connecting them then only i will get an odd path so the number of uh, paths of odd weight will be b into w but we are considering a leech tree right so the pathways are exactly 1 2 etc nc2 so how many odd paths will be there here we split into two cases nc2 can either be even or odd first let us take the case where nc2 is even so exactly half the paths are of odd weight how many will be there n into n minus 1 by 4 so b into w is equal to n into n minus 1 by 4 now i am using the identity b minus w whole square is equal to b plus w whole square minus 4 bw b plus w is n and bw is n into n minus 1 by 
and a simplification gives me b minus w whole square is equal to n. This is the case where nc2 is even. What happens if nc2 is odd? There will be n into n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 2 odd parts. Again, uh, use the same equation and do some simplifications. You can see that b minus w whole square is equal to n minus 2. What is the role of b minus w here? Whatever be the value of b and whatever be the value of w, b minus w whole square is a perfect square, right? So either n is a perfect square or n minus 2 is a perfect square where n is the order of the graph. So we get a result. If t is a leech tree, then the order or the number of vertices of that tree must be either a perfect square or a perfect square plus 2. Why I consider this proof interesting is that you have proved a theorem in graph theory, in graph labelings regarding the order of the graph. But there is no graph theory in that proof. The proof entirely comes from algebra and number theory. There lies the beauty of that, of that proof, according to me. Okay, so that's it. Here, uh, as I already told you, there are only five uh, leech trees, but there are infinitely many trees which are proved to be non leech That is, they have not leech trees. Regarding path and uh, uh, stars, I have already proved that paths of length greater than uh, or equal to five are not leech trees. And K1 and where N is greater, oh, I'm sorry, here it is greater than or equal to, not greater than, greater than or equal to, four are not leech trees. And there are uh, papers which prove that you take a path and attach one tendon vertex to either V2 or Vn minus 1. Both are symmetric. Such graphs are not leech trees. Again, by stars are proved to be non leech trees except for the five graphs. All those five graphs which are proved to be leech trees are by star. But these are the only by stars. No other by stars are leech trees. That has already been proved. Before concluding, let me introduce two new concepts. The first one is leech index. Say uh, F is any edge labeling, W is the corresponding pathway function, and S is the set of all pathways. Both B and W must be injective, as in the case of uh, leech labeling. And let, let KF be the largest integer such that 1, 2, etc. KF belongs to S, but not k of plus 1, the largest continuous set that can be attained from this collection. And take uh, this maximum value over all possible edge labelings f. That maximum value gives me leech index. Why this leech index is interesting? When leech index is equal to nc2, what we get is a leech labeling. So leech index is a measure how close a tree is to being a leech tree. Here you have, uh, we have computed the leech index of some small classes of graphs. For K19, it is equal to 9. The proof follows exactly from the way in which we prove that K1n is not a leech tree for n greater than or equal to 4. Using that same technique, we can prove that uh, leech index of K1n is 9. For by stars, it is 18, provided at least one uh, among m and n is greater than or equal to 3. One can be two, the other, uh, at least one among them is greater than or equal to 3. Uh, when both values are 2, that is b2, 2, two the leech index is 15, and it is a leech tree that we have already proved. And we have uh, a very crude bound for uh, the leech index of a tree. It is beta 1 of t plus 4, where beta 1 denotes the matching number of the tree t. I'm not going into the details of matching number. I hope that uh, at least few of you will be familiar with the concept of matching number. And when coming to paths, we could improve that to beta 1 of t plus 6. There are trees which attains this uh, bound. This bound is sharp, but still it is crude. This concept is introduced by myself along with one of my doctoral students, Sina Vargis, and uh, Professor S. Arumugam. And this is 
to appear in Journal of Discrete Mathematical Sciences and Cryptography in the coming issue. So this is a fresh new topic of research. And uh, as you can see, there are only a handful of papers published in Leach labeling. Say only six papers are there in literature directly related to Leach labeling. Regarding Leach extensions, there are a few papers, again, only a handful of papers, but there are a few more papers when we consider the extensions of Leach labeling. But regarding Leach labeling, only six papers are there. Maybe one of the reasons is that the labeling is restricted to trees. So we thought, why not we extend it to general graphs? So now we are trying to extend the labeling to graphs. But the major problem is that how many paths are there? When you are considering a tree, we can be sure that there are exactly n c2 paths. So that makes the problem easier. In fact, you can see that even that is difficult, but when compared to general graphs, that is easier. So the major challenge is given a graph G, how many paths are there? Another question is that when you are considering a tree, every path is an induced path, but that is not true in the case of a graph. So what will we look for? For induced paths or any path? So we thought we will extend it like uh, to any path. Any path is a path. So when we are considering networks, not only induced paths, but every path plays a role. So we can apply this concept there only if we consider all paths uh, which are uh, need not be induced. So we extended it in that way. And here you have uh, some examples other than trees which are leach graphs. You take uh, K3 or C3, complete graph on three vertices, which is the same as cycle on three vertices, label one, two, four. It's a simple exercise to see that you have all pathways, say one, two are edge weights, one plus two gives me three, four is here, four plus one gives me five, and four plus two gives me six. Uh, please note that four plus two plus one, seven is not there because it's not a path. Uh, so uh, there are six paths and all six labels are achieved. So this is a leach graph. Again, C4 is a leach graph. One thing which is interesting is that for C4, we have two different labelings. So when we extend the two graphs, the labeling need not be unique. There can be more than one way in which we can find the labeling. Again, for C5 and C6 also, we have a kind of labeling. And what we think is that cycles of length greater than six are non-leach graphs. As of now, we don't have a proof, but we are working on it and we are almost there. I think uh, in a week or two, we'll be able to prove that uh, now other cycles are leach graph. So that's a pretty new concept. And here you have a plenty of opportunities to work with. Uh, just for the sake of interest, non leach graph of smallest order is k4 minus c that is complete graph minus one edge some people call it diamond uh, here the smallest order order means the number of vertices and for this particular graph k4 minus e the leach index is computed as nine and uh, the uh, smallest non leach graph of uh, of graph of smallest size is p5 P5 uh, comes under the category of leach trees also. So here uh, you have a quick proof on K4 is a non-leach graph. In K4, we have 30 different paths. So path width must be from 1 to 30. 30 must be the path width of a path of uh, length 3 on four vertices. And these edge labels must be distinct. So definitely there will be an edge of weight at least 11. The best possible can be 9 plus 10 plus 11. So at least one edge will be of weight greater than or equal to 11. So all edge weights up to 10 must be attained from K4 minus E. And just now I mentioned that the leach index of K4 minus E is 9. So we cannot attain all edge weights from 1 to 10 from K4 minus E. So using the leach index of K4 minus E, we can prove that. K4 is a non-leach graph. 
So here are some open problems in the, the direction of both leach trees and leach grafts. Does there exist any leach tree other than the five known leach trees? I assume no. So better not to waste time to find more leach trees, but rather prove that there are no further leach trees. Uh, even if you could prove that there exist only finitely many leach trees, by proving that uh, say if t is a tree t, then uh, the, then its order will be bounded by some bigger number, or number of edges will be bounded by some bigger number. Uh, that gives uh, uh, some uh, direction towards proving that there are no more leach trees. Now, finding leach index of graph classes is an open problem. We have exploited only three, four classes. Then, characterizing leach graphs is again a pretty new open problem and uh, find uh, some classes of leach graphs or equivalently non leach graphs this prove that these classes are not uh, leach graphs is also interesting so i have crossed my time uh, with that i conclude my lecture thank you for your patient hearings now the forum is open for discussion and thank you so much it was a great talk. Maybe we can all unmute ourselves and clap for Parna. Okay, now we get to the part where people can ask um, questions. About oh, I, I have a quick question. Uh, yes, please. So, uh, I mean, this may not exactly be in the spirit of what you're doing, but have you ever considered leech labelings for infinite trees? Uh, actually, we haven't tried, but I think uh, in that direction also some research work is going on. Uh, okay. Yeah. It. I mean, it looks. It looks. Uh, at least there. There are certain. I, I mean, I think there is actually a lot of infinite trees that are. Yeah. Definitely leech labelable and but maybe not all of them are i mean it looks like a curious question there too anyway yes extension to infinite trees is definitely interesting not much work is done in that direction that's a good question in fact all right thanks um I have a question just about leech graphs in general. So it seems like yeah. you're close to some non-existence results and there's there's what seems to be a conjecture about trees, but do you do you have an idea of whether there should be a similar uh result about like only finitely many leech graphs or does that seem to be different than trees? Uh, to have all pathways distinct is not that easy. So there is all chance that very much similar to leech trees, there are only finitely many leech graphs. But as of now, we don't have any proof of that. But since there is no restriction uh, regarding having cycles, we may be able to construct leech graphs of the larger size, as much as larger as we want. That is also a possibility. So we are trying to construct such graphs also. You give me any natural number n, uh, I'll give you a graph of order greater than n, which is leech. So we are trying it that direction also. If we could prove that, that proves that uh, the number of leech graphs are not finite. So work is going on in that direction also. Uh, a pretty new topic, just a four months old child. So uh, such questions are to be addressed. Yeah, but that would be a very interesting result. Yeah. Prove that. Thank you. Okay, maybe um, we can come to the last part of our seminars.